A few years ago, I started my Science Olympiad journey at this very spot. And now, two years later, I'm continuing this journey as a Division C competitor with three events and representing the TJT, one of the best schools in America. And in this video, I wanted to share with you guys my 2025 Science Olympiad season so far. So right now it's mid-March and I'm done with all of my invitational and regional tournaments. And right now I'm preparing for states, which is gonna be this weekend. So my regional events were geologic mapping, helicopter and electric vehicle. And for states, I'm gonna be doing helicopter, code busters and tower. But for today, I wanted to focus on my helicopter event because throughout the season, I've had so many issues with it and so many interesting events. And even today when I was testing it, something crazy happened. A little bit about the helicopter event itself. Basically, teams of two are tasked with creating a helicopter that weighs at least four grams and is powered using a rubber motor. And it's not necessarily a helicopter as you'd envision. It's more of like a wooden frame and there's two rotors at the top and the bottom and the rubber band spins the rotors in opposite directions, making the helicopter go up. And the goal in this event is to keep your helicopter in the air for as long as possible. So the total score is your helicopter time in the air in seconds. And your score can be multiplied by 20% if you submit a flight log. And there's also a lot of limitations and criteria. So as I said earlier, the helicopter has to weigh at least 4 grams. Also, the helicopter should not be no bigger than some specific dimensions. And again, as mentioned before, it has to be powered only by rubber. And as long as you follow the criteria, you're free to build whatever you want. Behind me are some of my previous helicopters I've built. So this was my first helicopter that I made. Uh, don't ask where the bottom rotors went, but it's pretty standard. It has these two stationary rotors on the top that are glued to the frame so they can't spin around. And then imagine the bottom ones, they could spin around. Uh, and the rubber band was he connected here and it would be connected to the bottom rotor to spin. And here's another one I made that's basically the same, but it actually has the bottom rotor and it's a lot better in quality. It works the same as the other one. This bottom part just spins. The helicopter also has a vane over here that's supposed to stabilize it a little bit in the air. So the ceiling is going to stop the helicopter and it's just going to spin like this until there's no energy left. This helicopter taught me a lot about the event itself because uh, I learned that you actually have to be really precise and careful when you're making the helicopter. You guys can see here that it's pretty poorly built. You can see a lot of glue and residue left on all the rotors. And this all greatly affects the flight time of the helicopter. And also another really important lesson I learned was how to properly glue the mylar sheet onto your rotors because the first time I tried, it got stuck to my board and I couldn't get it out and had to redo it. So I used that helicopter to compete at Cornell. And then after that, I made the same helicopter, but a lot better and a lot more precise. You can see here everywhere that there's not any glue residue left. Everything's much more carefully done and it's a lot more precise. So this helicopter flew 39 seconds at Cornell. which is pretty bad, but I've seen helicopters fly less than 10 seconds. So for our next Invitational, we used this helicopter and the flight time was a minute 32. So it was a great increase and you can see how much little details pay off. So after that, I had the idea to make a full carbon helicopter. There's absolutely no wood on this except for the top. This helicopter is pretty similar to the previous one, except for the fact that it uses carbon for everything. Uh, you can see here that the frame is a lot thinner because it's carbon, and carbon weighs a little more than balsa, so we had to cut down on it. So this helicopter turned out really nice and very strong because it's carbon, but also because it's carbon, it was a lot heavier. So the flight time on this one was around a minute or a minute five, and we never ended up using this for a competition. But we did use this one as a spare. And finally, here are my two last and best helicopters. I used this box to transport them to competition so there's no chance that they break. So this helicopter was made on a completely new design. 
as you guys can see both of the rotors can now spin instead of only the bottom one and there's four rotors on the top instead of only two so i made the frame for this one out of carbon and i split it into two so that it would be a lot stronger so this one is essentially almost the same thing except the frame is made out of wood and not carbon and also the rotors are a little bit better again it's the same design as the carbon one so you can see both rotors are free spinning and the top one has four um and if you guys notice here uh the wooden frame has these little trusses with string and i added these to make the helicopter stronger and to prevent it from breaking so I hope to compete at Carnegie Mellon Invitationals using this one. But before my first flight attempt in Carnegie Mellon, while I was putting the rubber band onto the helicopter, the entire frame ended up snapping. So I couldn't use it. So luckily I brought a spare helicopter to Carnegie Mellon and I ended up using this one. And the time was around a minute 40. So I brought both of these helicopters for regionals and I used this one as a spare because it's a little bit worse at flying. And finally at regionals, I was able to use this helicopter for my official flights. Both runs with the helicopter were really good. The first one was around a minute 50. <laughs> And as we were preparing for the second run, a lot of mishaps happened, such as the rubber band breaking while I was winding it. So me and my partner ended up launching the helicopter for its second run exactly two seconds before the timer ran out. And by the way, if you guys were wondering what I used to wind my rubber, I used this custom 3D printed winder. So the helicopters actually require a lot of winder turns to fly. So for example, at regionals, I wound the rubber band around 50 times on this winder. And since this winder is a 1 to 20 gear ratio, that means that there was a total of 100 turns on the rubber motor. Could you imagine spinning your rubber band 1000 times at a competition? That's why I made this. It's pretty simple. You just spin this and there's an internal gear ratio that makes this hook spin 20 times more. So this is the helicopter that I'm going to be planning on using for the state tournament. And actually today we were at a school to test the helicopter at a high ceiling and it got stuck in the ceiling. <laughs> As of now, there's only like four days left until states, and I thought this would be the end of my helicopter journey. But luckily, there was a gym teacher that gave us a really long rod that we used to pull the helicopter out. So as of now, before states, I've managed to get the helicopter weight down to exactly four grams, and all that's left for us is to keep testing different rubber band lengths, widths and densities okay that's it for today's video i hope you enjoyed it and i'll try keeping you guys updated with my state's experience bye